Okay, so first of all, I would like to introduce myself for those who don't know me. My name is Akhadali Awadina, and today I'm going to walk you through the concept of fine needle aspiration and psychology. Okay? So, we start with fine needle aspiration. The first thing, or the first point I'm going to mention concerning fine needle aspiration is its definition. And the simplest definition of fine needle aspiration is it's a type of biopsy procedure. But someone is going to ask me, what is biopsy? Biopsy is actually the examination of tissues removed from a living body. Okay, living body. And we do this procedure for many reasons. I have included three of the main reasons for why we do this procedure. Okay? And they are to discover the presence of a disease. Yani to be more of a or not. Or to discover the cause of a disease. Yani to be more of And to discover the extent of a disease. Okay, biopsy is not our subject for today, so I am going back to fine needle aspiration. In general, fine needle aspiration procedure okay, uh, includes uh, inserting a needle into an abnormally looking tissue or body fluid. Hello? Yani that is true. Abnormal uh, tissue in the body. You insert a needle into this abnormal tissue to take a biopsy. That's it. Nodules or abnormalities in the body, chicken out in general, okay, uh, can be examined using only imaging techniques most of the time. Tamam? But in some cases, we cannot differentiate if this nodule is benign or malignant. In this case, we resort to finding the aspiration. Okay? Hopefully, we can use this technique in examining the thyroid. But how can we do this? Actually, we need three things. The first thing, obviously, you need is a needle. And the good point to make is that... So, <laughs> and, and a good point to make is that this needle is actually thinner than the needle you use in withdrawing blood. Yeah, it's not. Okay? The second thing you need is an ultrasound machine. An ultrasound machine helps you uh, find the accurate place in where you have to insert the needle. Okay? And the final and the most important thing you need is actually a good dog. <laughs> this image shows uh, uh, or summarizes the whole procedure. Okay? In this uh, image, you can see a tumor in the thyroid gland. And the procedure includes inserting a needle into this tumor to take a biopsy from it. And after that, I uh, remove the contents of a needle and empty it into a glass bottle. Okay, and send it to the material. Okay, what then? <coughs> what is after sending the glass slide to the material? We do something called cytology. Actually, the word cytology is divided into two parts. The first part is cyto, which means cells. The second part is study, which means that science of, or the study of. So, the whole word cytology means the study of cells, or the science of cells. So, in this subject, I am going to talk about three main things. The first thing I am going to talk about is thyroid nodules or lumps. And this title is divided into two parts also, which is benign and malignant. The second main thing I am going to talk about is thyroiditis. And I have chosen a specific type of thyroiditis, which is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And you will find out why I have chosen this type in the next slides. The last thing I am going to talk about is papillary thyroid calcium. So, Starting with thyroid nodules or lungs. A good information you have to know is that the thyroid, the most common result you get when you examine a thyroid nodule is benign. You have also malignant, but the most common result is benign. Okay? But someone is going to ask me, why do we have thyroid nodules? A good uh, reason for having thyroid nodules is because we get radiation to the head and the why we get radiation, or why we use radiation to the head and feet? We use it to treat several illnesses, like chronic ear infection or chronic osteitis. Okay? After radiation to the head and feet, okay, you may get thyroid nodule. I have told you that, in general, nodules in the body can be examined using only imaging techniques. But imaging techniques is not the best way to examine nodules. Actually, the best way of examining a nodule is by taking a biopsy from it, which we call 
Sometimes, even the finding of aspiration, even that, that this procedure is not diagnostic, we may sometimes uh, uh, have a problem with the diagnosis, even with finding the aspiration. In this case, we do something called, or a surgery called hemithalidectomy. In this case, we don't take a sample from the, 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 the nodule. We actually excise the whole nodule and send it to the pathology lab to make an accurate diagnosis. Okay, so you are telling me to stop with the pathology thing and go straight into the image, so that's what I'm going to do now. The first image you see here is, a, is an image for a benign thyroid nodule. Again, the most common uh, results you get uh, from a finding of uh, examining a thyroid nodule is benign. Okay? In this image, you can see a benign curriculum epithelium with barrier and amounts of color. This mind map summarizes uh, the psychological features of a benign thyroid nodule. Which is well differentiated, no metastasis, no invasion, invasion of the overall, and a good prognosis. The second thing is malignant thyroid nodule. And malignant thyroid, actually, when you do a fine needle aspiration for a malignant nodule, you can diagnose, you can diagnose all type, types of malignant thyroid cancer. Okay? Examples for a, a malignant thyroid cancer, you can a diagnosis using fine needle aspiration is a very thyroid cancer and metastasis to the thyroid cancer. But if you have follicular carcinoma or hereditary cell carcinoma, you cannot actually diagnose them using fine needle aspiration only. This mind map also summarizes the psychological features of malignant thyroid cancer. Again, action, lacks differentiation, frequent metastasis, local invasion, and the bad diagnosis. Okay. This also, this image uh, includes uh, a comparison between the benign thyroid nodule and the malignant thyroid nodule, not some information. Okay, starting with thyroiditis. Thyroiditis, from its name, is an inflammation of the thyroid gland. We actually have many types and causes of thyroiditis. The most common type of thyroiditis is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and that's why I've chosen this type to talk about. Thyroiditis in general includes enlargement of the thyroid gland with or without pain. And it was proven that uh, thyroiditis in general, or uh, most of the types of thyroiditis, can be diagnosed by finding the aspiration. Or the best way to diagnose them is by finding the aspiration. I've included two images for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The first image is a low microscopic image. In this image, you can see a lymphoid follicle. And in the center of this lymphoid follicle is an active germinal cell. The second image here, so also of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, this is a high microscopic image of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In the center and to the right of the image, you can see thin cells. These thin cells is called thyroid cells. Okay? And to the left of the image, you can see lymphoid follicle also. The last thing I'm going to talk about is papillary carcinoma. Papillary carcinoma is the most common malignant thyroid cancer. Okay? And this point is, I think, is important. If you examine a nodule using imaging techniques and you find that this nodule is actually larger than one centimeter, finally, the last, you must do finding the aspiration. If you find that the nodule is larger than one centimeter using imaging techniques, you must do a finding the aspiration. Also, papillary carcinoma, I included two images. The first image here shows fronds of cells, fronds and sheaths, sheaths of cells with fibrovascular cores. And if you look at the image in general, you can find that the cells follow a papillary pattern. And that is one of the reasons for calling it papillary carcinoma. The last image here shows a calcified structure in the center of the image. This calcified structure is called Samoma body. Samoma body can actually be seen in many diseases. But the most common disease you see Samoma body is in is papillary carcinoma. So if you take a slide and see Samoma body is in it, it is most commonly papillary carcinoma. The last note is that if you look at the neoplastic cells, uh, the nucleus of the neoplastic cells, you can see a central clear appearance. And that, that, and that happens because of fixation. Thank you.